Hello, continuing on with the 2023 Oxford Pat, we've got up to question 13. So you use some measuring scales to discover the following relationships between masses of apples, bananas and carrots. OK, find all combinations of apples and or bananas that have the same mass as five carrots. OK, right. So we, we're going to need to get then apple in terms of carrot and banana in terms of carrot. That seems to be the way to go. So. Now, let's write this out in a slightly clearer way. I don't like all these subscripts that we've got going on here. So I'm going to have 2A plus 3B plus 4C equals 4A plus 3B. Oh, those three Bs are cancelling, plus 3C. So we've got that 2A is equal to C, just drops out on that. So A is C over 2. And then we've got on the other one that A plus 4B plus C equals 8B. So we've got, what's that, 3 over 2C is equal to 4B. So B is equal to 3 eighths of C. <coughs> Excuse me. Right. So we now have to get to five lots of C by combining A's and B's. So for five carrots, well, we could have 10 apples. That would certainly work. How are we going to get? Well, we're only counting up in halves in A. So we need Bs, uh, multiples of B that are going to hit multiples of a half. So that means we're going to need them in, well, every four lots of B gives us one and a half of a carrot. So, and that's going to be the only way. So we're going to hit Bs when we've got four Bs. Then we're going to have eight Bs. Then we're going to have 12 Bs because that's going to be one and a half, three and four and a half. So we'd have to have an A added to 12 Bs. We'd have to have, well, we're losing three As each time, aren't we? So we'd have to have seven As there, four As there. And it looks like we've just got those permutations. And that wasn't bad for six marks. Then we've got question 14. If 2 to the power of that is 16, x, y is that, find those. Can you have, well, they're going to have to be both be positive, aren't they? I mean, I was looking at this here, well, you could have a negative x and a negative y. <clears throat> but that isn't going to solve our problems for this one because we're not going to be able to do 1 over 2 to the power of something and end up with 16 so this is going to end up being pretty quick then we're going to have to have x plus 2y is equal to 4 which means that we've got 2 plus 2y uh, squared is going to be equal to 4y just putting in the um the um wrong way around x is equal to 2 over y and then multiplying through by y so putting that in we end up with this, which means we've got y squared minus 2y plus 1 is equal to 0. All right, y is 1, x is 2. And I think we're only going to get one solution on that. For re and yeah, that fits in here because we, yeah, we've got, I mean, it just comes out so easily, doesn't it, on this. But we can't have a negative solution. Yeah, so that's going to be fine, right? That was a quick three marks, wasn't it? Uh, the springs one. Oh, they got it different this time. We're squishing springs rather than stretching springs. A ball of mass M sits in equilibrium on top of a set of three identical springs. Spring constant K, as in the diagram, yeah. Ball is pressed down by distance X, then released, assuming that 90% of the stored energy is transferred to the ball. How high will the ball go above its point of release? All right, so we don't even have to take into account it's been pushed down x we're just going from point of release right this should be okay then i think so the single spring is going to compress twice the amount that the double spring is so because they've all got the same force going through them here well i say they've all got the same force going through them. we're going to have double the force going through the top one as the bottom ones because it's um yeah it's sharing the force on this bottom layer here so we're just going to be compressing by two thirds of X on the top bit and one third of X on the bottom bit. So our 
EPE that we're going to get on this, which is so a half kx squared, we're going to get a half of k two thirds of x squared. So that's for the top one. And then we're going to have two lots of a half of k one third of x squared. So that is going to be two ninths plus one ninth. So that's one third of kx squared. That is our EPE. And then we've just got 90% of that. So we're going to have nine tenths of one third kx squared is going to be equal to mgh. And we want h. So we can cancel that and that to get a three there. So h is going to be equal to 3kx squared over 10mg. That was quick for six marks. Um, but there you go. That's a spring question for you. This paper seems to be going worryingly well at the moment. It always makes me think that I'm missing a point on a question or something like that when they all go this smoothly. Question 16. In astrophysics, this length is a measure of the size of a cloud of gas, which internal pressure just supports the cloud of gas under gravity. OK, yeah, whatever. It depends on various things expressed in this form. Right. So we've got that lambda is C to the alpha, G to the beta, rho to the gamma. And right. So we just so we've got meters. They've told us that's meters. Then we got meters per second to the alpha. We've got our usual thing with uh, working out G, you know, the units of the gravitational constant. Oh, they've given us the, wow, they haven't even asked us to work that out. Because you know, quite often people forget that or they're unsure of it and they've given it to us. Well, wow, this is, um, yeah, generosity personified. And then we've got our density there at the end. So we've got for kilograms then, we've got that zero is equal to minus beta plus gamma. For meters, we've got one is equal to alpha plus three beta minus three gamma. And then we've got for seconds, we've got that zero is minus alpha minus two beta. So we've got on all of that, well, gamma is equal to beta. So that's what we've got on the first one. Gamma is equal to beta. So that means they cancel out in the second one. We get alpha is equal to one. So if alpha is one, beta must be minus a half. And gamma must be equal to minus a half. Yep, dimensional analysis can never really go wrong on those ones. I mean, that, that one was made easier than they gave you the units that you needed for the tricky bit. All right, question 17. A mass M on the end of a rigid rod is of negligible mass. Oh, they've just given us a picture here. Is there anything that isn't in the picture? No, they just described a picture, right? Find an expression for F of V in terms of the angle theta that the pendulum makes to the vertical. Right, <clears throat> so forces let's add our forces in here so we've got an mg going downwards we've got tension going there i mean this is really normally you draw it there wouldn't you so that's our f that means we can resolve vertically and horizontally so we can say that t cos theta this is going vertically is equal to mg and then horizontally we'll have that t sine theta is equal to f so that means, yeah, we've moved, yeah, we're moving at a constant V, so that's all good. Well, we divide one by the other then. So we say that tan theta is F over mg. So F is equal to mg tan theta. Right, that seems okay. So, I mean, it's still a function of velocity, even though there's no velocity there, because theta is a function of velocity. So we've still got that sitting in here that that is f of v because it's f of theta and theta is theta of, of velocity. So um, right, sketch theta as a function of v in the case that f is proportional to v. Right, sketch theta. So we're sketching 
theta versus velocity. Right. So yeah, I suppose we could have we can have both directions. That's a terrible place to put the axes. Right, let's draw these out again because I don't have space to draw things there really. And that's an awful set of axes. Right. So we want theta against velocity. We said that f is proportional to theta, haven't we? So what did we have? Theta therefore is uh, so we can say that is k times v is mg tan theta, which means that we've got theta is tan to the minus 1 kv over mg. Right, so we've just got to draw an inverse tan graph. So, okay, fine. So we're going to have an asymptote there, we're going to have an asymptote there, we're going to go through here, and we're going to have this sort of thing going on. That's going to be at minus pi by 2. That's going to be at pi by 2. And that's it, really, just drawing an inverse tan graph. And you can see that's what we're going to expect. Just rub out that dot there so it doesn't look like I've got a minus at the top. You can see that's what we're going to expect as velocity gets quicker or quicker in either direction. I mean, the, the angle is going to get bigger up to the point of the, the rod being horizontal, but it's never going to quite get to horizontal because we still need that vertical component to cancel out the weight in order to keep things in equilibrium so we're going to be tending towards 90 degrees but we're never going to get there right the rate we're going through these i think we can probably do another question oh it's a seven marker so let's make this the last one in the section then we've got a quartic polynomial uh, which has the following proper properties right so we've got a second derivative equal to zero only at that point those two points We've got a first derivative equal to zero, x is two, but the fact that I haven't put only there suggests we're going to have others. Then we've got some values here for f of x. Right, so if we've got a quartic then, so let's start off and say our f of x is a x to the power of four plus b x cubed plus c x squared plus d x plus e. So we've got all of that. Now we need to put all of these things in. So we can say f of zero equals zero. So therefore, e must be equal to zero because all these first four terms are going to go to nothing. So that's dealt with that one. And we've got e is equal to zero. So that's one thing. Then we've got f of one equals three. So that means we've got the a plus b plus c plus d is equal to three so let's call that equation one that we've got off of all of that that's dealt with that now we need to do our df dx so f dash of x is going to be four a x cubed plus three b x squared plus two c x plus d and that equals zero when x is two so f dash of two equals zero. So that is four a times eight, so thirty-two a plus three b times four, so twelve b plus two c times two, so four c plus d, and that equals zero as we got there. So that's our second equation. So that's good. So we dealt with that one. Now we need our second derivative, which is going to be equal to 12ax squared plus 6bx plus 2c. OK, and that is 0 at 1 and 3. Right, so f double dash of 1 is 0, f double dash of 3 is 0. So that is equal to 12a plus 6b plus 2c, so let's call that equation 3. And then this one is going to be 12 times 9, so 108. Actually, I, I could have simplified some of this, couldn't I? Because we've got factors of 2 all the way through it. Anyway, 108a uh, plus 18b plus 2c, that is also equal to 0, so that is 4. Right, so let's get these maybe closer together. We've got a 
plus b plus c plus d. I wrote a bit smaller as well. That's equal to three. That was our equation one. Now equation two was 32a plus 12b plus 4c plus d. Now equation three, so let's just halve all of this. Is Oh, that was equal to zero. I left off there. So we've got 6a plus 3b plus c is equal to zero. And then equation four, we can halve it all again. So 54a plus 9b plus c equals zero. So that's our four equations that we have to solve, which is going to be the best way to do it. So actually, it was a nine. Let's just make that clearer. It's a nine. So let's get rid of some c's then. We can do four minus three. Seems like a good thing to do, doesn't it? So we're going to have 48a plus 6b equals zero. So divide all of that by six gives us 8a plus b equals zero. Then we could get rid of, well, let's get rid of d's in one and two. So yeah, let's do two minus one, which will give us 31a plus 11b plus how many 3c is equal to minus 3. So let's do, I don't know, you could go anyway here. Yeah, let's do 3, 3 times 3, minus, yeah, I'm, I'm trying, we want to get rid of these c's again. Let's go back to number 3. So I'll do minus 3 times 3 and then add on this thing that we've just done here. Let's call that 5. So minus three times three, that is giving us a minus 18a minus 9b minus 3c equals zero. And that's what I'm going to then add to this. So that's giving me 13a plus 2b is equal to minus three. Right, so we've now got these two things related to a's then, haven't we? So what are we going to have on this? We've 8a, well, 16a plus 2b is 0. So yeah, let's write that under there. 16a plus 2b is equal to 0. God, this is a pain, isn't it? So 3a is equal to 3. So a is equal to 1, which means b is equal to minus 8 which means that C is equal to what we got with an easy C in. Let's go back to equation three. So we've got six minus 24. So minus 18 plus C is zero. So C is 18, which leaves us with D. So we add these together, gives us 11 plus D is three. So D is equal to minus eight. So that leaves us with f of x is equal to x to the power of 4 oh, minus 8x cubed plus 18x squared minus 8x. All right, that was long winded, but easy. So that was seven marks. It was a lot of work for seven marks, but it never really felt that under threat. But I think that's been long enough on this video. It's got us up to 18 as well, question 18. So, yeah, eight questions left in the last two videos. So, yeah, I'll leave that one there. But again, everything seems to be going worryingly well. Yeah. Anyway.